Good evening and welcome to this distinguished lecture by Professor Amartya Sen. Thank you so much for coming. We're delighted that so many people have come out on this evening. I'm Sabina Alkair and direct the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative that has the honor to host this lecture. Unfortunately, the Chancellor of the University, Lord Patton of Barnes, is unwell so cannot be with us this evening. He would have very much wished to chair Amartya's lecture had he been well enough. I'm very pleased and grateful to recognize Sir John Vickers, the warden of All Souls College, to chair this distinguished lecture and the ensuing discussion. Professor Vickers combines a rigorous and high-profile academic portfolio with authentic engagement in the public sphere. Alongside his own research and publications, being a fellow of the British Academy and former president of the Royal Economic Society and many other things, in 2008, Sir John became chief economist and executive director of the Bank of England and then Director General of the Office of Fair Trading. And from 2010, he chaired the Independent Commission on Banking, which drew up the government's banking reforms after the financial crisis. So it's very lovely for us that this lecture and lively exchange now involves not one but two former Drummond professors of political economy, both of whom can confidently weave between precise and technical discussions and perceptive assessments of current events. Such qualities are very needed in these troubled times. Would you please welcome Sir John Vickers. Uh, Sabina, thank you very much indeed, and we, we all wish uh, Lord Patton uh, a speedy recovery. Uh, welcome to everyone here in the Sheldonian, and I believe to quite a number watching online as well. My task is to introduce Amartya Sen, and it's simplified by the fact that he needs no introduction uh, at all. To say um, that he's a towering figure in economics, winner of the Nobel Prize in 1998, that would be greatly to understate uh, the case. Indeed, it would almost miss the point. Because whether the concern is about human rights or poverty, famine, development, justice, or the imperfect workings of democracy itself, there surely can be no major field in the study of society, not just its economic part, that Amartya Sen's work has not illuminated in one way or another. And then there is the contribution also to philosophy, moral philosophy in its broadest and most practical sense. I could list all the institutions at which he has taught and worked, um, University of Delhi, LSE, Harvard, and others. Currently, he is the Thomas Lamont University Professor at Harvard and also Professor of Economics and Philosophy. And along the way, there was the Mastership of Trinity College in Cambridge. Another thing I could do is draw from a list of, I think, at least 20 books and hundreds of papers that he has written. But instead, I will say a brief word about Amartya Sen, the teacher. My generation of Oxford students, undergraduates in the late 70s, <coughs> graduate students in the 80s, had the enormous good fortune of being here in Oxford during Amartya's Oxford decade, the 10 years beginning in 1977, when he was first at Nuffield College, then at All Souls as Drummond Professor. There were the lectures to PPE and other undergraduates, and I remember sitting in the Gulbenkian Theatre, it was long before the uh, Social Sciences Building that there is now, uh, in the back row, hearing about that tragic donkey called Buridan's ass, which died of indecision. This was part of the theory of choice. These were the days when welfare economics was central to the curriculum and where within PPE there was a strong bridge between economics and philosophy in the area of moral philosophy and welfare economics. And prominent on our reading list was the original edition of the great book Collective Choice and Social Welfare, whose new edition um, uh, we're, we're celebrating, among other things, with this evening's lecture. I remember two things vividly about the copy of that book in the PPE room uh, in the Bodleian. One is that it was orange. Now, this is not in itself a deep point, but at the, <laughs> at the seminar this morning, uh, Amartya remembered a philosophy journal being yellow, and therefore I thought it's a perfectly legitimate point to make now. <laughs> 
Even more vividly, I remember the, the daunting nature of the starred chapters. You'll see this as well in the, the new edition. Um, the starred chapters contain the mathematical proofs. And in an amazing uh, feat of publishing, you could tell which were the starred chapters before you opened the book, because there were sort of stripes, different shades of gray as you looked at the book on the outside with a very well-thumbed unstarred chapter, and lots of people leaving the starred chapters for another time. <laughs> All I will say is that in social choice theory, as in life, starred chapters can be very rewarding. But the most dazzling thing of all, uh, for me and I know others, was the extraordinary seminar held in the old library at All Souls by Amartya with Ronnie Dworkin and Derek Parfit. This was intellectual excitement of the purest sort. Very sadly, on New Year's Day this year, so just a couple of weeks ago, um, came the double blow of the loss of Derek Parfit and on the very same day of Tony Atkinson, the great economist of social justice and public policy, especially in relation to inequality. And when one thinks of Amartya, uh, one thinks of, of Tony and of Derek too. The work of all three of them greatly influenced the generation of graduate students to which I belonged in the early 80s, though Tony Atkinson was not yet at Oxford at that point. And by then I had the extra uh, good fortune of being at All Souls uh, with Derek, who was then writing Reasons and Persons, a book that all philosophers here will know, and with Amartya. Now the thing about great teachers is not that they teach you much. What they do is make you think, and they inspire you. They inspire you to try to probe, at least try to probe the frontiers of what we understand, whether in the pursuit of knowledge for its own sake, or to develop practical policies to make lives better, or, as no one exemplifies better than Amartya Sen, to do both. In that spirit, a lecture by Amartya Sen on democracy and social decisions would be a major occasion at any time. Recent events have just made it more so. Let us welcome back to Oxford, Amartya Sen.